Hi, it's Matt here for Newshooter.com at IBC 2015 in Amsterdam, and I'm with Christopher from Photokite. Now, you originally launched the pro version we've got right here, and this has been uh, quite a big success. That's right, yeah. So we started off with the Photokite Pro, and we very vertically developed it for the broadcasting market. Uh, it's gone really well, and we're already working on our very next generation, uh, starting with deliveries to our first customers uh, this October. So this was aimed more at the professional market, and now you've got something inside this tube that's aimed uh, at sort of the lower end of the market for people who can't afford to spend the money on a pro version. That's right. From the Photokai Pro, we actually got lots and lots of requests, lots of demand for a consumer-related version, uh, something that both prosumers as well as consumers can use alike. Uh, and so we started off um, with mobility and cost. Um, as well as keeping the ability to safely and easily fly a uh, GoPro carrying quadcopter. And so we came out with this. This is the Photokite Fee. Uh, we've just launched it on Indiegogo. And the way that it works is it fits into this tube. You pop out the vehicle itself. It unfolds. You lock it and it's ready to fly. It's a tethered system, so it's just like the Photokite Pro in the fact that it always remains uh, in the sky relative to you at the angle that you launch it. Because there's a lot of laws and regulations now concerning the, the, the flight of UAVs or drones, so this is sort of overcoming that in a, in a certain degree because the laws differ from that of, uh, of a regular drone? That's right. So uh, when you look at the regulations on typical drones, traditional drones, those always boil down to the safety and ease of use. Uh, that's really what we focused on with the core technology of the Photokite. When you tether it and you do it intelligently, then you can create a self-flying system that's extremely safe and therefore not subject to the same types of regulations. And I believe CNN has applied on your behalf to, uh, for, for some type of regulation that uh, allows it to be, be used just about anywhere. That's right. CNN is helping us push through the Exemption 333 uh, with the FAA here in the U.S. And that's been a great help in terms of getting this uh, accessible to anybody to use both professionally as well as uh, recreationally in the U.S. And for people who may not understand what Exemption 333 is, in layman's terms, what does that allow for? Uh, that just allows for the ability to use this commercially in the U.S. without having to request an additional permit. Okay, now what's the sort of uh, range that this can this can be tethered up to in terms of heights? So right now we're trying to aim for um, uh, as, as high as we possibly can. This system flies eight meters, uh, which we're trying to double right out of the gate. Um, and so uh, you're able to fly it about as high as you want. Uh, interaction changes the higher you go. And flight time, how long can this, uh, this stay in the air for? We're aiming for a minimum of 15 minutes flight. And this comes with everything except, obviously, the GoPro? That's right. And what's the sort of price point we're looking at here? So right now they're selling on Indiegogo for $2.99. And when, oh, so when, when are they be available? Uh, so we'll be delivering the first units in February or March of 2016. And who's this, who's this primarily aimed at? I mean, you said the consumer market, but can you see a lot of professional photographers, videographers, people working in news environments using this system over the pro version? Uh, I can certainly see the use case for this to be able to capture quick and easy aerial shots. Um, the professional version, the Photokite Pro, is just kind of uh, developed for a different use case. It's for longer flight times, much more stabilized pictures. Because this one doesn't have a, an inbuilt gimbal in it. That's right. It, it is uh, vibration stabilized. Uh, it does not have a gimbal, though. And uh, I noticed before we were talking with uh, the, the guys who make Steady XP, mm -hmm. so that's a device that allows you to once you finish shooting, uh, restabilize the picture. So that's something that could possibly be added onto this in the future? Absolutely, and that's just one of many platforms that can be added onto this, this kind of system. Uh, it's really exciting, the possibilities that we have. Uh, it's just a matter of seeing what's next. So people who aren't familiar with how this is actually controlled and operated, does it work via some sort of app or do you control it from the actual device itself? So the easiest way to control the Photokite fee is actually through gestures. Uh, there's two buttons on here. One controls the ability to actually just turn your hand and the vehicle will turn at the exact same time that you turn your hand. Uh, that stays true for a position in the sky as well. You can change it just with a quick twist of your hand. Uh, and so we think that these gesture controls, getting away from the traditional joysticks, is really the way that uh, the future of drones are going to operate.
And if you just want to monitor and start and stop your GoPro, obviously you're going to use GoPro's wireless app. That's right. So you can use, a, use a, um, the GoPro app as well as an, a PhotoKite overlay that we put in there to be able to control things uh, not related to the GoPro, but in addition to it. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for